Good morning. You're very welcome to our service of worship here in Balagan this morning. It's great to see you all. If this is the first time you've been with us since we reopened the doors after lockdown, um, you have already seen some differences in how we, we are seated in church and uh, just the processes that we have. Um, you're encouraged to keep your masks on during our, our time together and also to remain seated throughout our time together. If you have need to, to, to leave your pew for any reason, if you attract the attention of some of the stewards, they will deal with your, your situation accordingly. Um, and it just hopefully continues to create that, that safe environment where you can just come and know that, that you're in a, a place of, of safety as we, we share together in these mornings. It is good to see you all. Book of Hebrews, we're told that this wonderful line, let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. Over these past number of months, we've got out of the way of meeting together, been forced upon us, but we've got out of that habit and it is so good to get back into the habit, back to this place where we can be encouragers to one another. Yes, we can, can watch online and we, we have listened to DVDs and all those things that have helped keep us in contact over the, the period of lockdown. But this is the place where we know our church family, where we can encourage one another and we can be part of all that, that we do for the gospel of Christ in this place. I wonder what your week has been like. Has it been manic? Or is it all busy and all systems go at the minute? You're meeting yourself coming back. Does it not make it all the more important to come and to be here where we can be still? To be still for the presence of the Lord. We're going to sing those words now. And to say we remain seated while we sing. We keep our masks on while we sing. And uh, don't forget to breathe while you're wearing your mask. I don't want any of you expiring because you have a mask on while you're trying to sing. But please, uh, please do that. And also, you can just say that the, the screen under the balcony is playing up a little bit this morning. So you folk who, who normally would use that, I hope these screens at the front are, are clear. I know they are clear enough for you to see, but I hope that that doesn't detract from your worship this morning if you would just follow on the front screens instead. But we come to bring praise to God as we sing together. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Thank you.
Let us come before our God in prayer. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you that we have this opportunity to come together as your family in Ballygowan, to come and be still in your presence. Lord, you know the week that each of us have had, the busyness of the week, the frustrations, the anxieties, and how wonderful we now have this opportunity to come and to be still, to set aside the things of the world and to focus our minds fully onto you, the sovereign and loving God of all. Lord, we thank you for the wonder of creation that is all around us. As you've revealed yourself through your power and through your might, we marvel as we move from the summer into the autumn. We see the colours change in the leaves and we see the beauty of creation all around us. We praise your mighty name. Lord, we give you thanks that you have created each one of us in your image. That you breathe the very breath of life into each of us. And that you have granted us this day that we can come and sing our praise to you. We can lift our prayers to you. We are reminded who you are and what you have done for us. Lord, you are a God of amazing love and amazing grace. That you would pour your love upon us in our unworthy state. For we gather before you this morning as a broken people. Lord, we are sinners by our very nature. We can't help ourselves. Even in this past day, we have sinned against you in our actions in our words and even in our thoughts. Lord, you know that we have been selfish. We have allowed ourselves to be angry. We have followed the ways of the world and not your ways. And yet, Lord, you tell us that all we need to do is confess that sin to you. And for those who know Christ as their Saviour and Lord, that sin is dealt with. It is taken from us once and for all, no more to be a burden to us. Lord, how could we ever repay all that you have done for us? And yet we are told that we do not need to repay it. We just need to come, to come to you. And so Lord, as we gather together this morning, we do so with such assurance to know that you are in our presence, that your very spirit moves amongst us. And as it does, Lord, we pray that we will be drawn closer to you and also closer to each other in our fellowship. So Lord, we commit this time to you. We ask that your blessing would be upon us. And Father, we ask it all in the most precious name of Jesus. Amen. I want to turn to God's word. And we, last week we started to look at this uh, book of First John. And we read the opening verses of chapter 1. This morning we're going to move on to, again, just a short reading as we read from chapter 5 through to chapter 10. This is the word of God for us this morning. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son. It purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. We finish our reading there and we do give thanks to God for the opportunity to read his word together. Now, just a, a quick thought for our younger folk today. I don't know things that you discovered during this time of lockdown, things that, that you didn't know about yourself, or maybe you had forgotten about yourself. The one thing that, that came across for me is I had forgotten how much I like these. Anybody like Maltesers? Yeah, they're class, aren't they? Now, it all started off in the Malteser bun, those wee squares. Um, and you find that you've suddenly started to cut more into the tray than you really intended to. And as soon as Alison didn't realise how many had been eaten, you have to eat the whole row. So you get the appetite wetted for Maltesers. 
And then I realised that actually you can eat them before she gets them into the bun as well, and they taste great. Um, and now I've tempted myself because I've got the packet open, and I feel that really, and you have to melt in your mouth, not in your hands, not the ads, so you have to get it in fairly quickly, so you can enjoy it. But the one thing that, that sort of disappoints me at the moment is that in this time of lockdown, we're not allowed to share. Because I have, I have touched these, I, I can't risk passing the packet round. And because they don't keep, I don't, I don't know if you just work my way through them. I'll keep the rest of them for the sermon. We're not able to share things the way that we would like to. Um, we have to be very careful in what we, we give to other people, just in case some of the traces of that virus have been found in our hands and we pass them on to a bit of paper and pass them over to somebody else. It's not easy to speak with a Maltese in your mouth, isn't it? We have to be so careful in what we do. We can't do those things that we normally do. Usually, the children would be at the front and we would be wolfing the Maltesers into us like they were going out of fashion. But we're not able to do that. And so it is with so many other things in life. We're not able to share those things the way that we would like to. And yet, there is one thing that we can share. It's the most important thing that we have that we can share with other people. And it's this gospel of Christ. For we want other people to know about what we know about. We want other people to know what God has done for us. That he loves us so much that he allowed his son to come into this world with the purpose of saving those who were lost. Of taking our sin away from us because he died on a cross for us. And then to marvel at that resurrection which opened the way for each one of us to come to be with him in heaven when our time on this earth ends. What a message we have to share. We may not be able to share our sweets or to share the things we enjoy sharing together, but the gospel is still there to be shared. We share it in what we say, and we also share it in how we live out our lives. And people should be able to look at us and see our actions and hear our words and know that we know the gospel of Christ and that we want to share it with so many other people. We may not be able to share those things that, that we normally do. But please, please, please continue to share this wonderful gospel that has been given to us. Let's pray together. Loving God, we do again thank you for the gospel of Christ. For what it means to us. For the purpose of Christ coming into this world to seek and to save the lost. And Lord, you have placed that responsibility on all of us from young to old. To share that gospel. And we pray that you would fill us with your spirit. To help us to find the words that are needed. To see the opportunities that arise. And even our actions. To reflect that you live in us. Lord we pray that you would just fill us with your spirit. And encourage us to share all that you have given to us. Through that amazing gospel of Christ. And Lord we ask it in Jesus name. Amen. Just before we turn our thoughts to our prayers for others, there are just some announcements that I want to bring to you this morning. Firstly, that we meet again, God willing, next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We're going to continue that 11 o'clock start time until Sunday school resumes. So I know some have asked, but just for the, for the purposes of, of meeting together at the moment, we'll continue at 11 a.m. So if anybody asks you, you'll know what, what we're doing with that. Um, so next Sunday, we meet at 11. Uh, Robin will be bringing the message to us. I really encourage you to, to, to come, come along. And if you meet people during the week, tell them of your experience in church. That, that we trust that it is a safe environment and somewhere that, that folk could come confidently and confidently. Um, so please do encourage folk to come along next week. On Wednesday evening, we're going to meet here in the church between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock for a time of prayer and reflection. As is always the case in such matters, we're saying to you, please come when you can and leave when you have to, even if you can only be here for 10 minutes. 10 minutes more prayer that uh, goes up to the Lord and that's so necessary uh, both within our church family and indeed in our, in our nation at this time. So Wednesday from 7 o'clock until 8 o'clock. 
And then as has become our, our normal over these past weeks, the offering will be collected by way of a retiring offering. The plates are, are in the, on the table in the vestibule, and as you're going out, if you have your envelopes there, do feel free to, to pop them into those, uh, to the plates that are there for you. And then just one other item just I want to mention to you this morning. I think it's always important that, that we acknowledge someone who has endured a lot. This morning I want to think about a lady who has been put through an awful lot over a long period of time. And so we need to offer our congratulations to Gladys Gabby, who has put up with Jim for 60 years tomorrow. This is their wedding anniversary. So I want to, to offer our congratulations, and I think we can do that by way of a round of applause for them. For that's a wonderful <laughs> Jim, I know you've spoiled her rotten over those years as well, like she's put up with you, but you've, you've looked after her well, so congratulations from all of us. <laughs> These are, are all of the announcements at this stage. We, we come again to prayer as we bring our prayers for others. Let's pray together. Our loving God, your word tells us that we should not be anxious about anything, but rather we should come to you with our concerns and we should ask for what we want with a grateful heart. Lord, there are so many needs in this world that is around us. It's hard to know where to start, but we think of the, this pandemic that continues to sweep this world. Uh, Lord, we pray that things would be brought under control. We hear the, the numbers that are mentioned, the thousands more who have contracted this virus. Lord, we pray for each one. We pray for the scientists who seek a vaccine that will bring an end to it all. We pray for your guidance upon them, Lord. We remember too families who have been so affected by the virus, those who have lost loved ones, others who have gone through so much pain and illness. Lord, we just look for that time when we will be free from it all and when, when normality can be resumed. And Father, we pray for the world situation economically for it has come through a lot and there's much recovery to be made we pray for your wisdom on governments that you would grant them guidance in uh, moving forward throughout all of this father we pray for our own government both in london and in belfast and as we think too of the brexit situation that has reared its head once more as we move into that situation we do just pray again for that wisdom to be bestowed upon our politicians. That they would seek to do things for the good of the country and not for individual good or favour. Lord, we know that this is a complicated issue. And there's even greater need for you to be involved because of that. Lord, we pray for this land. A land that we love dearly. A land that was known as a land of saints and scholars. And has fallen so far from that. So many who have forgotten about you. And Lord we pray that revival would come once more. Just as, as, as it has done in the past. For we yearn for that time and all would call upon your name. As saviour and lord of their lives. Lord we ask that you would bring your peace into our nation's life. And Father we pray for our congregational family here in Ballygown. For each family connected to this place, we ask that they might know your blessing. Lord, we remember those who are ill at this time, either at home or in a hospital. We pray for those who are awaiting treatment and test results. We give thanks for answered prayer for those who have been through treatments and operations even in this past week. You've seen your healing hands at work. Lord, we remember those who are anxious and concerned about not being able to, to be about as, as once they were. That this lockdown has left them nervous about the whole situation. Lord, would you bring your comfort and peace to each one. And Father, we remember our young people today. For those who are away at university, we ask that they would continue to know your love and your presence with them, just as they would continue to know our thoughts for them. We remember those who are in schools, uh, maybe those who have moved to, to new schools, uh, making new friends and just going through it all in these most unusual of circumstances. And Father, we pray for the youth work within our church. Uh, Lord, we pray that we'll be able to, to resume 
in, in early time and that our young folk would continue to be reminded of your love for them. Lord, you know the many needs that we have, many concerns that lie upon our hearts. And we bring all these before you now, knowing that you're a God who not only hears us when we pray, but a God who answers our prayers and answers those prayers in your own perfect way. And so, Lord, we ask all of these things in the most precious name of Jesus. Amen. Do you remember those halcyon days whenever you could only get three television channels? BBC One, BBC Two and ITV. Do you even know how many channels you can get today? I'm sure it's well into the hundreds. And yet there are times when I sit down for half an hour to watch something and despite all of the channels that there are, there's nothing that you could watch. And yet for many people, they just sit and watch anyway. Somebody summed it up well when they wrote this piece entitled The 23rd Channel. The TV is my shepherd, I shall not want. It maketh me to lie down on the sofa. It leadeth me away from my faith. It destroys my soul. It leadeth me into the paths of sex and violence for the sponsor's sake. Yea, though I walk through the shadow of my Christian responsibility, there is no interruption, for the TV is with me. Its cables and remote control, they comfort me. It prepareth a commercial for me in the presence of my worldliness. It anointeth my head with humanism and consumerism. My coveting runneth over. Surely laziness and arrogance will follow, or ignorance will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house just watching TV forever. I hope that doesn't sound like you. But unfortunately that's exactly how it is for many people. We read in Ephesians 5 verse 15. Be careful then how you live. Not as the unwise but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish. But understand what the Lord's will is. <clears throat> See instead of joining in and contributing to the world's evil. We should be doing whatever we can for the Lord. Far too many Christian people like to run with the world and they contribute little to the kingdom of God. That's why we should set out each day to do some work for the Lord. Otherwise, we're stealing from him and we're giving to the world. The world says, enjoy life, take it easy, watch all the TV you want to. It says, eat, drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. It means enjoy yourself to the hilt because when we die, that's it. But we must not be taken in by what the world says. Again, in Ephesians 5, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. A number of years ago, there was a terrible accident on a level crossing. A car was struck by a train. At the trial, the, the watchman was questioned. Were you at the crossing the night of the accident? Yes, Your Honour. Were you waving your lantern to warn of the danger? Yes, Your Honour, the man told the judge. But after the trial had ended, the watchman walked away mumbling to himself, I'm glad they didn't ask me about the light in the lantern, because the light had gone out. See, in the midst of this pandemic that we find ourselves in, has your light gone out? For we all have days when our light is dimmed or maybe not even glimmering at all. And God sees it when the light has gone out. So instead of being sucked in by the world, we need to declare that message of God, that gospel of Christ that's, to be present, that's been presented to us in scripture. And we need to share it with others, that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the son of the living God. So I want to take note of this message that John declares in our text this morning. And the first message he gives us is that there is no darkness in God. 
In verse 5, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all, no darkness, no sin, no error, nothing evil in God. The soldier was at his basic training and he said, our sergeant made things very clear. He told us, don't question anything I say or tell you to do. And don't worry, because I never make mistakes. Well, only once, and that's when I thought I was wrong, but actually wasn't. Is that the way it is? There are some people that actually feel that way about themselves. There are, are many days when each of us feel a lot less than perfect. There's a lady pushing her shopping trolley around Tesco's and one of the wheels was making a shocking squealing noise uh, but she persevered with it and when she finished her shopping she noticed that there was a lady looking for a trolley so she offered her this trolley explaining it makes an awful noise but it works. That's okay said the other woman I have a husband at home just like that. <laughs> and you know we're all a bit like that. We work but often we make an awful noise because of the sin in our lives but not our God there is no darkness in him 2 Corinthians 2 21 or 2 Corinthians 5 21 Paul writes God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God no sin found in Jesus and if there is no sin in Jesus, then we know that there is no sin in the Father. In Hebrews 4, 15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Or in 1 Peter 2, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin. No deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When, they, when he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. These scriptures declare to us that Jesus never sinned, not even once. John's message is clear. There is no darkness in God or in Christ. We have a perfect God. We have a perfect saviour. But our problem is that we cannot understand how anybody could be completely perfect. We've never seen it before. We've never heard of it before. The only way we can ever understand is through the life of Christ. Through examining his life and his ministry here on earth. Can we find any darkness there? Any sin in him? No, because there is none. This is why whenever people try to, to corrupt the gospel message, we must always point to Christ. He is our message. He is our hope. He is our saviour. People can accuse us all they want, but they cannot accuse our saviour of being sinful. The second message that John gives to us in this passage is that claiming to know God does not mean that you actually do. Verses 6 to 10, if we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in the darkness, we lie. We do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. One of the things that I don't understand in life is, is glory-hunting football fans you know the sort who, who change allegiance from one team to the next depending on who's winning? It mystifies me when I hear people say, oh, I used to support Leeds too. How could you ever stop supporting them? There's a verse in the Leeds song. It says this, we've been through it all together and we've had our ups and downs. We're going to stay with you forever 
at least until the world stops going round. Former Liverpool manager Bill Shankly was once asked if football was a matter of life and death and he replied, no, it's much more important than that. Actually, it's not. But what about our Christian walk? Can we say of God, we've been through it all together and we've had our ups and downs? We're going to stay with you forever, at least until the world stops going round. Or whenever things go the way that we don't want them to go, whenever life gets tough, do we simply throw the heads up and storm off? What does that say about our faith? Must have been pretty shallow to start with. And I think that many have bought into that theology that as long as we're good and a decent person, that's all God wants. And he'll reward you accordingly, both in life and in death. But there's much more to it than that. Verse 6. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live in the truth. I'm not suggesting that there isn't darkness in our lives, because there will always be some. Because we live in a world of sin. We all have a sinful nature as long as we live in the flesh. Does this mean that we'll always be tempted to sin? Well, yes, it probably does, but it doesn't mean that we have to give in to it. The word of God stands true. Claiming to know God doesn't mean that we actually know him. And the third and final message that we're given in this passage is that confession and walking in the light, they go hand in hand. Verses 7 to 9. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Mark Twain once said, we are all like the moon. We all have a dark side that we don't want anyone to see. A minister once decided to use a rich parishioner to set an example. Paul, he said, you're a successful businessman. Surely you could contribute more to the building fund. Paul replied, but my mother is in a nursing home. My daughter has lost her job and my son is starting university. If I can say no to them, I can say no to you as well. But whenever you say no to someone in need, when you have the means to help, you're not walking in his light. And there may be many other things that indicate that a person is not walking in the light as they claim that they are doing. You may recall these folk, Jim Baker, pastor of the Assembly of God Church. He succumbed to lust and greed. He ended up in jail. I mean, out of prison, he wrote a book entitled, I Was Wrong. And he truly was wrong. Or Jimmy Swaggart, a famed evangelist, caught more than once with a prostitute. Leslie Heal, a man who preached the gospel and yet was caught embezzling tens of thousands of pounds from his church. Such messages and incidents damage the message of the gospel of Christ. They hurt the witness of Christ in this world. But then we all do things that hurt Christ and our witness for him. But the good news is that we can repent and change. We can confess our sin no matter how large or how small that sin is. And he will forgive us. We can walk with him. And we can return to walk with him. But we all need to walk in the light as best that we can. And that means walking with him. Walking daily with him, it's the only way to walk in the light, to let our light shine for him. For our goodness comes from him. It's not from us. We become better by rubbing shoulders with him, by praising his name. Someone said, I would rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I would rather that, that someone would walk with me than merely tell me the way. The eyes a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Fine counselling can be confusing, but showing by example is always clear. 
And that is true for each of us as well. We have a message that we need to declare that we must speak and we must live it out. And then when we do that, then the lost of this world may come to believe and be saved through Christ. We have a gospel to declare. Let's not be shy in doing it. Let's pray together. Loving God, we praise and thank you for your word. We give thanks for the encouragement that we receive from your word and also the challenges that it brings to us. Lord, as you fill us with your spirit, would you keep us free from the temptation of sin? Would you let us walk in your light that others would see that we have what they need? And may we share this wonderful gospel every opportunity. And Lord, we do ask it in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. We're going to conclude our time together as we bring praise to God once more. And again, we remain seated as we sing. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus, the Nazarene. Let's praise his name. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may they rest and abide in each one of us, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>